Cheers, this is a Little Dragon for Little Dragons production with a special episode of Celtic Warfare episode 6. And today we're going to talk about something else than long knives and uh, daggers. We're going to talk about space and axes. So, we're going to look at some spear techniques with counter-attacks and attacks and different grappling and so on. And we're going to use both the two-handed Celtic spear and the short one-handed Celtic spear which can also be used as a javelin. But we're not going to go into detail about every single technique but more about the fundamentals. So, let's begin. The theory behind spear fighting is quite simple. Most of the attacks are thrusts and some cuts, but uh, you're keeping the distance between you and your opponent. And that's your basic line of attack and defense. You have to keep that distance, and you have to have a backup plan if that fails. And one backup plan would be to move around so that he can't get close to you. But if he does come close to you, then you can use the back of your spear to attack your opponent. You can do this with a two-handed spear and a one-handed spear. If you have a one-handed spear with a shield and are using the back of the spear, it looks a bit weird, it looks a bit clunky at first. But it's a technique which is really good if your opponent gets too close. You can even use the back part to push your opponent back. So let's look at the two-handed spear first. Here you see the different basic attacks. And as you can see these attacks are very simple. Most of them are uh, thrusts and some cuts. But it's a... Uh, it depends on what you're supposed to do. So here you have some counter attacks. So blocking, attacking, and you can attack hands, leg, arms, and so on. But a very important thing is to control your opponent's uh, spear away from you as well as you control the length of your spear. How far you're holding your spear. He had a really great counter, actually. You can do it against neck, arm and so on. Here you have the one-handed spear. And the different grips. And here you have the basics of that combination. So, now to the underhand grip. It's really easy to use the underhand grip against your opponent. You can even throw the spear at your opponent. Here you have the counter with the back end of the spear which is really simple. It looks a bit clunky or weird at first but it's great. So he attacks, I thrust, he attacks, I thrust and so on. So you, you stop his spear and attack. But one thing you need to think about, he might drop his spear and pull another weapon. We don't have an example of that because we are just talking about a spear right now. But we will be looking into what to do when somebody just drops their weapon and attacks their opponent with another weapon in another video. So here you see an example of a fight between a two-handed spear and a one-handed spear. You need to lock your opponent's spear and push it away from you because you can't just lock it and believe that he will stand still and here I have some sparring so I'm going to comment on some things and one of the things look at how much I am moving around I'm not letting him close to me and I'm not letting him 
to uh, make me stand still or anything like that. I move a lot around, forward, backward, side to side, and even grab his spear, as in that case. So, you have been looking at uh, uh, two-handed spear against two-handed spear. I don't have much of sparring with one-handed spear because uh, we ran out of memory, so you will get what you get, but it's the same thing there. Lock your opponent's spear and attack. Don't stand still. Don't think that you, alright, I've locked his spear, now I'm finished. But lock, push away, attack. That's the main techniques of attacks and counterattacks with spears. The axe is a different piece of cake altogether. You still have many counter-attacks and so on, but you have to think about that you have a weapon which is quite differently... It's quite different in the way it's balanced and how long it is. You, yeah, of course you have the pole axis and so on, but one thing to think about the axe, if you have a two-handed axe or you only have a one-handed axe, but no shield, then you need to use grappling techniques and much more pushing away your opponent's weapon before attacking. It's not like I I block and then attack. Static blocking with a with an axe does not work at all. So it's really important to actually do the different attacks. So let's look at a two-handed axe. So now to the basic attacks of the two-handed axe and one thing you can observe while I'm doing the basic attacks is simply that I'm not pulling my weapon way back to get enough momentum but I would put more force into shorter cuts to be able to move around quicker and that's the same thing with the one-handed axe you have to do shorter attacks and with more force instead of doing the long attack to use less force because in the end you lose energy and here you see different types of hooking and uh, attacking afterwards and one thing important is that if you hook into me I hook into you if you don't do anything afterwards I will take advantage of it and pull the weapon out of your hand and attack here you see different attacks with uh, the one-handed axe. Here I don't have a shield because uh, you have to see the different attacks, but you have seen these attacks before. They're almost the same as the two-handed axe, just that you have two hands uh, on the two-handed axe. Here you see me with a shield blocking the opponent's attack, and that's the thing that the shield is good for. He hooks into the shield, he can't He's stuck into the shield, so he can't do much. So I do different attacks then, and pull his arm, in that case, just to show what you can do. You can even thrust or hit with the upper part of the axe, right in the stomach, just as a basic push-back attack. You can also use a shield to push your opponent into a position where he can't use his weapon or well, let him hook into your shield and then let him pull the shield and give you an opening that's one of the best actual ways of dealing with axe here you see me fight against uh, Michael with uh, the two-handed axe and we as before with the spear are moving a lot around we are dodging we are moving around grab, grabbing the opponent's weapon and then attacking. So then that's the way of actually defeating this weapon. To hook, you da, use the advantage as a disadvantage. To use the hooking way of the weapon so it can hook into other weapons and then pull the person towards you and then attack him before he can recover. 
So here you see the sparring with the axe and shield. And same thing there. It's uh, quite simple. That's why it was used as much as it was. So when fighting with axes and spears and really it, you do the same thing with every single type of weapon. It's about movement, it's about timing, it's about uh, a lot of other things. And if you don't move around you will end up like me having two axes thrown at you. Just like this. Maybe not like this but well they're just resting there. Next time we're going to talk about a very special topic which I'm not going to mention yet. I'm going to mention it in the Adamix Talks uh, uh, update video and uh, I will be putting that out a little bit later than usual because I will be on a market which I also will be talking about on the Adamix uh, Talks video. But otherwise that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Bruce. Cheers.